Oh yeah, nothing like starting the day off with a, a shower. Not only for me, but for the car. That's right. Car needs a shower too, just like everybody needs a shower every day. Always, always. Clean yourself, clean your car. Clean body, clean mind. Well, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Thanks for joining us on Vacation Station TV. Your virtual getaway. It's Thursday. Beautiful day. Absolutely stunning day in the Smoky Mountains. 83 degrees under mostly sunny skies. Just a few clouds that look cool. And uh, they're going to be moving in and out throughout the day. But there's really no mention of any real rain activity. Although it's been raining at the cabin for days. I don't understand why. What the heck is going on? And my car will be zip-tastic in just a couple of minutes. There, look at that. It's giving me the five-time ceramic coating wax. Yeah. My goodness. Could slide an egg off that hood. Yeah, buddy. He's waiting for the green light. And there you go. That means I can go. There. See how simple that is? Got to fix the mirror, though. That's good. Yesterday I didn't have to fix the mirror, but today I got to fix the mirror. I think it depends on how long they uh, keep you in the car wash. I think that has a lot to do with it. Okay. So I fixed the mirror. And now I'm heading back out to the main road. This is Parkway slash 66, heading north towards, and we're in Sevierville already, but towards 40. Most of you know that now. And do remember this weekend, Shades of the Past, which is the precursor to the Rod Run. So for the next, uh, right through the end of the month, there's going to be cars here. There's going to be traffic here. There's going to be fun things to do. If you're coming up to the Smokies. It's going to be pretty good. They're, they're talking maybe, I don't know, I think it's Friday night, Saturday. There's a, there is a slight chance of showers, but it's diminishing because yesterday was 80%, and last time I looked, it was down to um, 60%. I'll fix that for you. Traffic, not bad at all today. Not bad at all. I'm going to be taking us to, to go look at some of the hot rods. Look at the hot rods and see what's going on. Thank you for joining me last night. I did a live impromptu um, live cast from the Casa de Cuckoo up in, as somebody said, the attic. It's not the attic, it's the loft. <laughs> Ladies, oh, we love when you do it from the attic. There is no attic in a cabin, at least not that I'm aware of. It's a loft. It's the library, and it is a real library. Very comfortable library. I like that. I love going up there in the fall and winter season because it's not too hot up there and uh, very comfortable, very quiet, and I could uh, contemplate the world events and my belly button at the same time. Heading into Sevierville, going to try again to go to my bank. I did, I did not realize that my bank closed on Wednesdays at 12.30. Why they closed, I do not know. But it's a business, and businesses should be open at least five days a week from 8 to 6 or 8 to 5, whatever they decide. But they shouldn't be closing at 1230, especially a bank. So how are all of you today? Everybody doing okay? I picked up, um, that guy's blowing some serious smoke. From the Goat Costa. So they're going to be doing a... Um, Hopefully you join me. I'm going to be doing a cooking program. I, you can hear the bag. <laughs> I know you can. But this here 
I'll show you. Oh, there. Okay, there. That's the um, corn salsa. <laughs> there it is. Corn salsa. S E L S A. Salsa. <laughs> corn salsa. And this, by the way, you can find at the Goat Coaster, along with hundreds of other cool things. Hundreds of other cool things. What else did I get? Uh, I got to turn here. I'm turning, I'm turning, I'm turning already. I'm turning. I got this, too. This is Piccalilly. Look at that. Byler's Piccalilly. How many of you ever had Piccalilly? Um, how can I explain it? Kind of like a relish, but not a relish. Really tasty. Uh, you could put it on toast. You could put it um, next to your eggs and things like that. Very, very tasty indeed. Now, the corn salsa, I'm going to show you what I'm going to be doing with that. You can't even see me. Hi. Hi. How are you? I got my goat t-shirt on. Um, I'm going to show you how to cook a steak on a stove, and it's going to look and taste as if I cooked it on a barbecue. Because sometimes it isn't safe for me or Miss Marie to go out and cook on the barbecue. And that's because the smell draws animals. That's right. Big animals. Like Rosie and her babies were up today. And I said, you know, I could go out to the barbecue and cook this. But then I said, eh, eh, probably not a good idea. Mm, no, because I don't know. I, you know, I, if I was a bear, I'd like a good, thick, juicy steak with you. So I decided, uh, I'm going to cook it in the house. And I'm going to show you how good it's going to look. And unfortunately, you won't be able to taste it. But you got to trust me on this. It's going to be good fantastic and I've done it before many times many times and I'll show you what to use how to do it and how delicious it's going to look I'll be eating it you'll be watching well I'll take a taste how about that I'll take a taste and then you try it at home you tell me if it doesn't work because it does it works every time I am I'm on Dolly Park Parkway in Sevierville A little crowded here today, but that's the way it is. And I'm going to go to my bank, and then uh, I'll head to Pigeon Forge, and I'll show you what's going on. So don't go anywhere. All right, I finished my bank business, car wash, good. I got that taken care of. Very, very happy, 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 happy. Now, I want to share something with you. Really important. We're heading towards the Christmas season, the holiday season, and scams are starting to show up in emails. Now, I mentioned this yesterday during the live cast, but I want to share this with you again because the more people that hear about this, the more I'm alerting you that these things are going on. Two separate emails, same day, first one came in from my bank, and I do a lot of business with a couple of these banks in town. And it alerted me, it said that it, it was from the fraud section of the bank. Now that would, that would alarm you, right? You'd say, uh-oh, uh-oh. So I opened it and I said, all right, wait a minute. You know, my senses were telling me this is not cool, but I didn't give them any information. And I'll, I'll tell you more now said it was from the fraud division of the bank and they wanted me to confirm a purchase at Matlock Tire for $167 for tires or a tire didn't really didn't really specify but for tires so I said huh that's interesting I just got brand new tires and it wasn't from Matlock Tire and I got them a couple of months ago so I scroll down further and I see that in order for them to um, give me the information that I would require I had to put in my full name my address phone number 
bank account number, routing number, and the, uh, the code on the back of the card. Now, I know for a fact my bank never sends me mail like that, ever. So immediately I knew that was a scam. Now, you'll, you'll probably get them, and probably many of you already have. Do not ever give your bank routing number or your ID number or your username or the three-digit code on the back. Once they got that, they're going to clean you out before, before you even click out of it. They're going to clean you out. So disregard those emails. If you're a... Uh, type of person that keeps track of your money, you'll know where your money goes. You'll know when you spend money, especially when you're starting to approach $100, $200, $300 or more. You'll know. And so that was scam number one. Scam number two was from Walmart, but not really Walmart, so I'm not bashing Walmart. But I knew something was wrong right from the get-go because it spelled out Walmart, but it had at the end an asterisk above the T, which I guess gets them out of trouble, <clears throat> excuse me, for using their name, but I don't think, why do they even care if they're getting in trouble? They're scamming you anyway. But I said, all right, this has got to be a scam. Opened it up, and oh, by the way, the title had said, second attempt to notify you of a parcel they're trying to deliver to me. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't ordered anything from Walmart since uh, I got the TVs for the house. And that's, what, six months ago, eight months ago. So I said, all right, let me check this out. <laughs> Jeffrey, check this out. So I hit it, and once again, they said they're trying to deliver a package to your address. But they didn't know my address. It says, please fill out the blanks below, which had to have my full name, address, bank number, bank routing number, and, of course, the number on the back of my credit card. So there's another scam for you. So the scamsters are out in force for the season. Now you gotta remember, during Christmas season, everybody's begging for money. Everybody's telling you their tales of woe. Everybody is trying to either con you or rip you off. So please be careful that you don't open anything, or if you do, be careful, don't fill anything out, just delete it, all right? But I needed to warn you of this because um, I'm getting more and more of those every day, and you'll see them as we get closer to the season. The scamsters will get heavier and heavier in YouTube, Facebook, right on down the line. They'll call you on the phone. Just disregard it, okay? You can't save the world. You're not going to help anybody by shoveling money in a direction. That's not how you help people. You help people by helping them with something they need done, something you may need to give them a ride to the store, to the doctor. That's how you help people. Don't shovel money to try to cover up your guilt for not doing anything, because that's what most people do. Oh, oh, you know, oh, you're going to see that a lot now. The dead or dying dogs, you're going to see that, and the starving children in East Jabapi. You know, they got some emaciated child there with a bloated belly and flies all over him. That's, that child isn't even alive anymore. That child is 70 years old in an old age home. They're, it's not real, okay? Those foundations are not real. If you want a real foundation, go local. Go to your local, you can go to your chamber of commerce or you go to the complex where everybody is and you say, hey, what's a local charity that really needs help? The local food banks need help, the veteran services need help, and you go in and you directly hand them if you have a check or you hand them cash, whatever it is you want to do, and this way you know it's getting into the hands of the people that need it. Don't send your money online. It's never safe, and chances are 90%, and it's statistically proven, 90% of the money you send to agencies or these quote-unquote um, help agencies around the world, most of it goes for administrative fees, which when you read between the lines there, it's paying somebody's salary. They spend very little money on advertising and they keep the money and they live happily ever after on their yacht, you know, in, in the Straits of Hormuz, and you, you think you're doing good. You sleep better because you think 
that you adopted this little child and you're feeding it. No, it's not being fed. It's not even real. Somebody took a video and they put it up there. That person isn't even probably in the same country they're trying to uh, suck money from you. So you've been warned, do not respond to these ads. They're phony, they're scams, and you'll get scammed if you fall into that trap. Okay, here's uh, Teaster Lane. I'm on Veterans Boulevard now. This is Teaster Lane right here at the right. I'm going to make a right. These are shortcuts. And what I'm going to do is make a left here on Old Mill. Old Mill District. This is the historic district of Old Mill. This is Old Mill Avenue. Beautiful place. Great place to come. Old Mill. You really enjoy it here. You can walk around this little tiny little town um, in a matter of minutes because it's really not very big, but it's really fun. This is where the Old Mill restaurant is. I know a lot of you like to eat there. They do have a good breakfast. Um, they got great lunch and dinner and stuff like that. It, it's uh, not great, but it's good. So I don't want to disappoint you and I don't want to disillusion you. Oh, this is great. This is great. Oh, wow, wow. No, it's not. It's good. That's as far as I'm going to take it. All these little plazas have great little shops, fun places, good gift-giving ideas. You can do real well for the holiday seasons. There's the Old Mill restaurant right there. On your left. The Pottery House is here too. Cafe and Grill. An excellent place to eat. A little overpriced for Jeff. There's a hot rod. <laughs> and we're going over the Little Pigeon River. It's always fun to stop here and get pictures at the Little Pigeon River. And Parkway is straight ahead. So I cut off all that traffic that was going down Teaster. Now, if you got to go down Teaster, you got to go down Teaster. But if you're trying to get to Parkway, you want to cut through Old Mill as long as it's not too crowded. But there are other ways to go. Just reference shortcuts on our channel. And if you like these videos that Miss Marie and I produce for you, please like, comment, and subscribe. I would appreciate that personally. And so would she. Here it is. I'm making a right on Parkway right now. And I want to see some of the cars. And already, as soon as I make my right, there are cars. Yes, sirree. There are cars. Hot rides. A lot of nice trucks. If you guys like trucks, a lot of nice uh, antique and hot rod trucks. Primarily, the Shades of the Past is for older cars, but it, it doesn't really matter anymore. Those days are over. The first year we were here, it was primarily for antique cars, Shades of the Past. And then little by little, the rodder said, which I don't really care, I'm going there too. I'm going to show my car there and at the rod run. They really should just make one rod run and make it for like two weekends in a row bunch them together and and stop clogging up the town for a whole month right put them back to back wouldn't that make sense <laughs> back to back weekends one shades of the past next one rod run right after it the same cars are going to be here it's not going to be any different same cars nice little tea bucket right in front of us cute 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 probably powerful it's from Ohio, 1932, most likely a Ford, because that's what everybody makes the tea buckets out of. A lot of money goes into that little tiny car in front of you. Fifty, sixty thousand dollars, maybe more. Who knows what what's underneath that hood? Who knows? Now I am in the Looky Loo Lane, so if you're in the right lane, don't beep your horn at people. This is the Looky Loo Lane. To us locals, it's known as LLL, Looky Loo Lane, where you get to drive slow and you look at the cars. If you want to go faster, get in the middle of the left lane. Then you'll be able to get around town. Do you want to let you know that I will be broadcasting live 
Friday and Saturday from Fantasy Golf. If you'd like to come out and meet Miss Marie and myself, please come on by. Fantasy Golf is on this side of the road, just up ahead. Can't miss it. Actually, it's right behind me. I just passed, I passed it by. It, right behind me. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. But that's where, if you'd like to come on out, we'd love to have you there with us. I'll be out there um, debating. 7 or 8 o'clock. I'll let you guys know at the left. Somewhere between 7 and 8 o'clock. I don't want to sit out in the sun because I can't be out in the sun, but um, that's a good time too because everyone will be out and about. The place will be crowded and you'll be able to uh, look at all the cars. That's the cool thing. That's why we're doing it. Friday and Saturday at Fantasy Golf. Back one light. This is Pine Mountain. Go to Jake Thomas behind me. Uh, old Mill. Go to the Old Mill light. That's perfect. That'd be a per You can walk right to Fantasy Golf. It's right next to it. So thanks for joining us on this edition of Rod Run 2022 in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. Part two will be coming up right after this.